So if you're a leader and your team members keep coming to you, they come to you for two reasons. They're either afraid to make a mistake because you haven't empowered them, or they just don't know what to do. So you have to decide, are you comfortable with this dynamic? Are you cool with them bringing you stuff all the time? Are you fine with this? Most entrepreneurs are actually really frustrated by this. So people keep coming to you and you say, oh gosh, why can't you just make these decisions? Why can't you do this yourself? Why do you have to bring everything to me? But then when they do make a decision, you override it, you disrespect them in front of people, you call them out on it, you call them stupid, you think they're stupid, or you yell at them for making a mistake. You can't have both, right? Either they're in charge of it, they lead it, you empower them, but you live with the success and you live with the failures, or you do all the decisions yourself. You can't get mad when people keep coming to you because you have to do that. Now, if it's the second thing, if people keep coming to you because they just don't know what to do, here we have kind of a rule where it's like, if it's the first time, you know, bring it to me. If I can answer this question, if I can guide you, if we can turn this into a learning moment, let's do that. If it's the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth time you're asking me the same question, well, that's either a problem with a staff member or there's like a really big hole in your processes or training. The same questions should not be coming up. The same challenges should not be coming up. You should be able to address them. People should be able to learn from them. And so finding the balance is really what's key between either not being command and control and letting people make mistakes and being comfortable to allow them to, but at the same time not making the same mistakes second, third, fourth time, or them not bringing to you all the time. Now there is a trick to this I learned from a business coach I worked with. It's the one, three, one rule. So if you are working with a team and you want them to come to you because you want to have your door open, you want them to be able to bring you things, follow one, three, one. First, what is the one problem? One problem. Don't lay all the problems on me. I'm not your therapist. Give me this one problem. Next, what are the three possible ways that you see to attack it? So Jason, you're my uh, staff member. You come to me and you have a problem. And I say, Jason, what are the three ideas you have for overcoming this problem? Then you lay them out for me. And then I say, great. One problem, three possible solutions. What is the one recommendation you have? How should we proceed? All right, one, three, one. You tell me what you think we should do. I either agree with that or I don't agree with that. Usually Jason's ideas are terrible, but <laughs> no, I'm joking. But one, three, one. And I didn't develop that, but it's something that really uh, can help shape the conversations you're having to empower people to come to you, but not have them fear making mistakes all the time. So how do you deal with the stress of people coming in and, and making their problems your problem uh, or coming in with no solution. See, that's a weird question because you're saying like their problems are their problems, not my problems. Uh, every problem is my problem. If I can help make their jobs a little easier, if I can help answer the question, if I can jump in, I want to. I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to support them. I don't want to do all the thinking for them. You know, I once heard someone tell this story where this manager was working with a junior and the junior kept bringing their issues and their challenges in the first month, that's okay, in the second month, the third month, and finally the manager goes, listen, you know, John, if I'm busy doing your job for you, who's gonna do my job? That's the way I look at it. If people are coming to me and I'm doing their job for them, then uh, we're gonna sit down and have a conversation, right? If I'm doing your job, Who's gonna do my job? And again, if there's not the processes, if there's not the training, if, they're, if, if I have not created the environment, the system, or I've not given them the support they need to do it, then in the interest of a happy client and a great project and, and a really successful company, I, I'm here to help. I'm a resource, right? So I, I don't think it's black and white. I think it's just looking at situations and objectively saying, is it my fault? because I've created the situation? Or are people just being lazy? Or are they scared, right? Like that's always the last option, right? You've just created such an environment where people are, there's a lack of trust, or um, they don't wanna fail in front of everyone, or they're worried about making a mistake, or getting hammered, or whatever it is. They may just be afraid. There's a great book actually on this. It's called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, where they talk about the different areas of a team that will start to really erode at the ability for a team to really be able to succeed and work its best. Things like a lack of trust uh, amongst the team players, or people who are really afraid to make a commitment because they feel 
fear that if they make the commitment and then aren't able to, to hit it, that they're going to be held uh, accountable for it. People not willing to have these tough conversations, these honest conversations with people because they're avoiding conflict. Um, a total lack of accountability. You know, everyone's saying like, yeah, yeah, let's circle around on that, let's do that, but not saying, hey, it's your responsibility, do that Tuesday. Or people coming into my office and asking me a question and then me saying, when will you get this done? And them saying, um, I'll let you know. Oh no, not when you'll let me know. When will you get this done? Or when will you tell me that you will get this done? Tomorrow morning you're gonna tell me the date? Like <laughs> some accountability here. And then of course the last thing within kind of this pyramid within the book is not focusing on results. Like just not caring or focusing on results. These are things that hold everyone back. And I think that these are like the underlying principles, the, the things that erode the team to set up the situation where people are constantly coming to you and asking you questions all the time. So of course, what do you do about this, right? Look at your team, look at yourself, look yourself in the mirror. Are you a control freak? Are you pouncing on people for making little mistakes? Are you holding people accountable for things that are outside of their control? Are they terrified? Or alternatively, are they well-trained? Did you hire the right people? Are they coming to you because they just don't know? Did you give them the processes? Did you give them the tools? Did you set them up for success? Or lastly, based on where you are in your business and how you're growing, do you just have to accept that this is the role you play in your business today, but you will not play it in the future? Those are the three options you have. You gotta look at yourself because it all starts with you. Okay, so being the CEO of the company, how often do people come to you with just problems and no solution in mind? And how like, how do you deal with that? How are you helping people problem solve on their own? How, why is it that people are always coming to you to problem solve? Hold on. So if you're a leader and your team members keep coming to you, they come to you for two reasons. They're either afraid to make a mistake because you haven't empowered them, and they just really don't want to do something that you're gonna get upset about, you're gonna get angry about. They just, they would much rather bring it to you because then you can give the answer and then they can just go on with their lives without risking you screaming or yelling or them embarrassing you. They're just really afraid to make a decision or they just don't know what to do. Right? They're just not properly trained. Uh, they, they're, not, they're, they're being stretched outside of their comfort zone. They're looking for reassurance. They just do not know what to do. Now, if it's the first, if they're afraid, if they haven't been empowered, if they think that you're going to scream at them, then that's a command and control issue. That's a culture issue. That's a, that's a you issue. That's not a them issue, right? You have trained them uh, that if they make a mistake, you are going to get angry and yell. And if they just come to you, you'll give them an answer. So you have to decide, are you comfortable with this dynamic? Are you cool with them bringing you stuff all the time? Are you fine with this? 